Oda, Oda, what are you doing right now, Oda? What the fuck, bro? Really, really? Revolutionary Army and BB Pirates? Really? Like, yo, <laughs> this fucking chapter, this chapter. I'm sick as fuck right now, and Oda's giving me the medicine I need, all right? Oda's giving me that fucking juice juice shit. I don't know, he got the OPOP OP fruit up in his writing because... Damn, bro. Damn. So Luffy and the Bartolomeo Pirates part ways. I really wish he wasn't parting ways just because he is, like, one of the best comedic reliefs of, like, anything lately. So, like, it is kind of saddening to see that they have to go their ways. And it doesn't even feel like they really said goodbyes or whatever. Like, it just felt like a kind of like, huh, well, see you later, Bartolomeo guy. Like, fucking hell. But then after that, seeing... The Thousand Sunny there and in One Piece. One thing you definitely gotta want One Piece, right? Uh, definitely you gotta wonder is it's not really that damaged. And you would think going toe to toe with Big Mom, shit is gonna get fucked up. So you gotta wonder, like, did they squash the beef? Is the little theory going around about Jola, I think her name was, from Thriller Bark being, you know, Big Mom's daughter? Like, could that actually have some sort of relevance? Maybe they stop fighting and actually gain the peace treaty or something, because how else would they escape the clutches of Big Mom and her ship and everything with only a select amount of the Straw Hats on there, and then escape from there as well, like, gotta make you wonder, unless they were chased off to that island, or maybe Big Mom just said, fuck it, like, a couple different questions you gotta ask yourself about how the hell the Thousand Sunny is still alright after going up against Big Mom's ship, like, damn, I'm wondering right now. And then Monkey D Dragon, Oda's just like, oh yeah, he's sitting at his desk, you know, doing his thing, like, what the fuck, Oda, like, he's just like, eh? just like casual like hey i'm just putting dragon in there hey like yo what the fuck are you doing bro like oh my gosh definitely curious about what is his deal about trying to be like gene from hunter hunter and i'm not saying that in any disrespectful way i'm just saying he's like oh so how's robin doing how's robin like yeah oh and uh luffy he's like oh yeah i'm full oh oh yeah sabo told me like what the Fuck, that's your boy like maybe in privacy he likes to keep that to himself so people don't really know exactly how much Luffy means to him because then maybe it'll attract more attention and more danger so he just tries to play it off but maybe Sabo kind of knows about his real relationship or maybe there's something deeper than that because he just kind of was like flippant about oh yeah Luffy and Sabo told me already like what the fuck like that's your son and we know he cares about him to a certain extent because he saved them in the past, seemingly, anyway. I think it was at Logtown or whatever. So, you gotta wonder, wh wh what's going on? Why and why didn't he go help his boy out when, you know, down at Marine Ford, too? Like, a lot of different questions about Dragon. Maybe he doesn't believe in the pirate life. Maybe that's why he became a revolutionary, because he ultimately wanted to change everything. So, he's kind of looking at his boy like, you're doing things, but you're not doing it for my cause. So, eh. But Robin, he really respects and really cares about. So, definitely uh, questioning Dragon's character as far as, like, as a father. Like, what does Luffy really mean to him at this point? If he's just flipping about it but oh robin yeah tell me about her either that or it's that he knows luffy's gonna be okay for some reason and he doesn't really worry about him maybe it's because of his spirit maybe it's something a little bit deeper than that maybe he could tell about some sort of connection luffy has to roger who the fuck knows and as far as him saying summon all the leaders of the revolutionary now it could be because you know cypher pole's getting stronger all the things that he was saying prior to that but it also could be that he quickly realized that burgess is there Maybe he already knew and he was like, we gotta prepare ourselves in the Blackbeard fucking pirate Shilu. Like, yo, this is gonna be fucking magnificent. And of course, Oda gotta take a break next week. And to be honest with you, my expectations for next, you no, know, two weeks from now chapter, kind of low because Oda usually does this. He does a big, huge chapter, takes a break, comes back with a very simple, like, what the fuck, like, uh, chapter. And then maybe two or three chapters after that. Ah! So, I'm not expecting too much connecting to what just happened right now. I mean, look what happened with the whole Kaido situation. We see Kaido about to annihilate motherfuckers, and we still haven't heard word of what the fuck is about to happen, and there was a break between that. So, I'm not expecting to see this happen instantly. But, oh man, maybe another little mini war before the final war at the end of One Piece is coming, and I don't think this early in the game, and I'm saying this early, but with 700, you know, plus chapters, or 800 plus 700, what the fuck, yeah, I'm losing my mind. We're 800 plus chapters in. But will Dragon, like, die at Black... Like, somebody's gotta die. Somebody got to die. If I go, you got to go. No, like, Blackbeard or Dragon, like, I don't know where Oda, like, it just seems so early, and it seems like Luffy would have to be a part of some of that just to see his dad before he dies or whatever. Because if this is a fucking the war that's about to go down, and all the revolutionaries are gonna be there, and then Blackbeard and his fucking OP-ass group are gonna be there, somebody's gonna fall. And it's like... Either that or somebody's gonna come and stop it, like another shank shit, like, you motherfuckers better cut it out. Like, 
what the fuck's gonna go down there? I feel like it's just so early still for any of that shit to happen. And I'm also curious if the base of the Revolutionary Army is located similar to the place where Law's hometown was. What is it, the White City or the White Town, something like that? Because, like, Bird just couldn't really identify it. He just said, like, it's all white. Maybe he found a way because of his devil fruit abilities dragon to like make it so that people can stay there and not actually get sick from the you know town or whatever and all that white city shit so maybe there's a possibility that's why he put the headquarters there anybody else would get fucked up and die but because of his powers he made it so that they can be you know inhabiting that place and then star clown buggy like buggy you salty right luffy took more of your men he fucked your plans up yet again bro like i mean at the end of the day i was just about to say buggy's just a clown but he is a fucking clown because like bro your, your plans are fucked let's be real here he's He's a funny troll and he trolled his way to the top but ultimately he ain't no boss so i can see him being stripped of his shichibukai powers or title very early on into this whole thing because now that he lost four of his people which i'm imagining those are all the people that joined up with luffy or whatever he's fucked and it's just funny as hell to see buggy get trolled yet again so he's gonna have a little vendetta against luffy even more now because of this situation it's like Ah, one thing I didn't like to be honest about this chapter and it's very minuscule and it's a very small nitpick is Usopp complaining that his arms are hurting from holding on going up the you know cruise to Zo or whatever like bro you just trained and you came back with all this fucking muscle stop complaining about your fucking arms bro like seriously like that's one of the qualities that you came back with like you're muscular you're buff now Hold the fuck on. Stop. And if any of you know me, you know that Usopp is one of my favorite straw hats, but I gotta call it as I see it. And it's like, you got all that muscle. Stop complaining, bro. And then, of course, Kinemon and Kanjiro. I've been saying this for a while. They're suspicious as fuck. Like, you still can't say all you're gonna say is, oh, we got one extra comrade. The only thing I can think of is something to do with the Wano Kingdom. They don't want everyone to know. Maybe it's in a really bad position and they're gonna do something shady to take it out of that. So there's something definitely very fishy with these two, yet again, withholding information. Like, oh, I ask one more, like, just tell them what the fuck you're doing. Stop being little shady motherfuckers. Because if it ain't bad or fucked up, then why keep hiding it? And whatever the fuck that's falling from Zoe, I don't know. Just a random shock. So it's so weird. Like, most of the chapter was absolutely mega awesome. And then it kind of ends with, like, something falling out of the sky from Zoe. Which kind of makes you wonder how fucking big is this mammoth elephant that they're taking ages. And Usopp's wee little arms are getting tired, like... Yeah, this is a big fucking elephant. 9 out of 10 for this bad boy. I mean, I want to give it a 10 out of 10, so maybe 9 and a half out of 10 because it was pretty fucking out, out this world amazing. Like, BB versus the Monkey D Dragon Revolutionary Army. Big question. Who the fuck you think will take it from there? I mean, all the leaders of the Revolutionary Army are going to be there. Blackbeard, his fucking crew, like... Do you see, like, do you think it's still too early for shit like this to be going down? And how do you see it going down? And also, what do you think about Dragon's relationship with Luffy? Why is it that he's, like... He doesn't seemingly care too much or he tries not to show it. But, like, he's like, oh, Robin, yeah, tell me about her. But, like, Luffy, huh? yeah, I'm full. Oh, well, yeah, I heard about it from Sabo. Like, what the fuck? And do you think it's a possibility that the Revolutionary Army's headquarters is where Law's hometown used to be? And Dragon found a way to make it inhabitable so that his people don't get sick. And Buggy, like, damn, dog, you lost some more, huh? You lost one. And your overall thoughts of the chapter, fucking One Piece, man. I love me some fucking One Piece, man. Oda. You the man, bro. You you the real MVP. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could do so as well, that'd be amazing, 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 amazing. Yeah, I got so much energy. I don't, I don't know. I'm for the world. And as always, people, have an awesome day.